guys, and I'm coming to you today with an unboxing of the Imperial Raider for X-Wing. Yes, we've got it, and we're gonna unbox it. Who's we? It's just me. There's nobody else here, is there? Imperial Raider, stay tuned. All right, we've still got it in the plastic wrap, so we're gonna pull this thing out. And this box is huge. This is probably the biggest box that they've ever come out with, although it might be about the same size as the CR90 box. And I can't wait to get my hands on this thing. And we've got our TIE Advanced. And this is, if you haven't played Epic Format before, this is the uh, Imperial Raider Class Corvette. It is classified as a Corvette. And this is the answer to the Rebels Corellian Corvette, or the CR90. Now, wow. This thing was created to scratch for this game by Lucasfilm to have something comparable in size that also had that wedge shape and looked kind of iconic. Look at all these different gun panels in here. Wow. And there's our bridge. And this is at this this is this one is done in the sliding scale because this thing is oh what is that? Oh, that's just the peg. Uh, the hole. And then our other hole is recessed a little bit farther in there. So that's gorgeous. And we've got our alternate paint scheme tie advanced here. This one just has a hint of blue in it. And it is pretty much just an, another tie advanced model. Not much different. All right, so this comes with what looks like standard pegs for epic ships. These will go into the bottom here. And we're going to set this thing up the best we can. Alright, so for size comparison, we have a transport here, a Corellian Corvette, and then our Raider right back here. Um, now, the Raider comes in just a hair longer than the CR90. GR75 is much shorter. Uh, this is actually a little closer to the camera. But there you go, that's probably a better comparison. Let's get a straight on look with both of them. Very comparable in size. And roll also. Okay. So in the cardboard we have our range 5 range finder, which the 3 and 3s will go together to give you a long range finder up to range 5. We have our base here. Um, it's not double-sided because there's only one ship. It would have been cool. I guess you could probably make your own if you want to do something custom on that side, but uh, we have our Raider Class Corvette fore and aft sections. Uh, they are grouped together, and this is the first time um, that we've seen such a wide firing arc like this. You know, um, And then we also have our side firing arcs too, so it's uh, kind of a unique. There's a little blind spot right here to the Although I don't, I think even the smallest ship base would be big enough to get hit by that. So, yeah, it can it can cover a lot of ground. We've got our tie uh, tie advanced new pilot dials. I'll pull them out in a little bit. Um, we've got the tie new uh, tie advanced dial for the extra ship, and then the Raider class Corvette. And here is a close up of the Corvette's dial. It uh, Looks like it gains full energy even at speed 2, so it's uh, very fast and uh, good good at, for energy. So it's going to be easy to power weapons with this ship. Um, and we have some mission tokens, some satellite type tokens, uh, the uh, double M target lock, and what looks like some blown up rebel transports. All right. We're going to start out with the awesome, awesome Juno Eclipse card. Uh, when you reveal your maneuver, you may increase or decrease its speed by one to a minimum of one. If you haven't seen this card before, this doesn't mean you get to invent new maneuvers. You can't go, um, you know, you can't do a, a six forward or a four turn or something like that. There's, they, you know, you can't invent new maneuvers this way. It has to be an ex an, ex an existing maneuver that a dial, a, you know, or a template exists for. Xeratic Strom. Enemy ships at range 1 cannot add their range combat bonus when attacking. 
So, uh, you know, that's nice. Good for getting close. Not going to get shot. He has an elite pilot talent. Commander Alozen. At the start of the combat phase, you may acquire a target lock on an enemy ship at range 1. He's perfect for the new equipment that they have coming. And Lieutenant Colzet, or would that be Colze? Probably Colzet, right? At the, end, at the start of the end phase, you may spend a target lock you have on an enemy ship to flip one face-down damage card assigned to them face up. Very cool stuff. And then we have Storm Squadron, Tempest Squadron, and then our Raider cards. So there it is. So pretty. There's our Raider cards. And the Raider... Uh, Basic ability is once per round, after you perform a primary weapon attack, you may spend two energy to perform another primary weapon attack. Two primary weapon attacks at four dice, plus, you know, up to three hard points on there. You can really shoot, you can shoot five times. We have its damage deck, four section, aft section. Okay. And... Here come some of the upgrades. Advanced Targeting Computer, we get four of these. This is one of the new updates. These are both in the TIE X1 title. These are the, the fixes for the TIE Advanced. The Advanced Targeting Computer is a uh, sensor, I mean a system upgrade. The Advanced Targeting Computer is a system upgrade. And it says when attacking with your primary weapon, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may add a crit result to your roll. If you do, you cannot spend target locks during this attack. So that's fantastic. You're not going to be re-rolling dice, but you're not going to need to re-roll that many because you get a free crit on top of whatever you do roll. So awesome stuff. Uh, cost five, but here is how they make that even better. And for the TIE Advanced, your upgrade bar gains the systems upgrade icon. If you equip a system upgrade, its squad point cost is reduced by four to a minimum of zero, and this is free. So this and this together give you a fantastic addition to your TIE Advanced at the cost of essentially only one point, and it comes with four of each of those. We've got more cluster missiles, uh, proton rockets. We've got, oh, we got the Imperial boss dudes. Here we go, Captain Nita. Captain Nita. Huge ship only, Imperial only. If you overlap an obstacle during the activation phase, do not suffer one face-up damage card. Instead, roll one attack die. On a hit or crit, suffer one damage. Okay? And he's a huge ship only, so he basically allows a huge ships to kind of act like starfighters if they're going through asteroids. Mm. And, and it's cool because they actually can blow up asteroids too, so that's kind of rep representative of episode 5. Grand Moff Tarkin, the man, he costs 6, so he's expensive. At the start of the combat phase, you may choose another ship at range 1 to 4. Either remove one focus token from the chosen ship, or assign a focus token to the ship. That's automatic, doesn't require an action, it's expensive, but it's every turn. It's... And even if it's a ship that can't take a free action, you're not using a free action, you're assigning a focus token to a ship. So you can do that even to a stressed ship. Really, really cool. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the Emperor, but I think Grand Moff Tarkin might be one of the superstars of this expansion. Alright. Emperor Palpatine. There he is. If you'll notice, he takes up two crew slots. So you cannot put him on any ship that has only one crew. So he can't go on a Slave 1 or he can't go on a Phantom, he can go on the Lambda, a Decimator, or on the Imperial Raider. Once per round, you may change a friendly ship's die result to any other die result. That die result cannot be modified again. He costs 8. This makes him the most expensive crew. Actually, I think the most expensive upgrade the game has ever seen. He's awesome. Next we have Admiral Ozzel, huge ship only, Imperial only. Uh, you can, as an energy action, you may remove up to three shields from your ship. For each shield removed this way, gain one energy. He is as clumsy as he is stupid, but it's quite the powerful offense. If you want to spend all, if they're not attacking you, spend all your shields to recharge your weapons, right? Okay. Shield Technician, when you perform a Recover action instead of spending all of your energy, you can choose any amount of energy to spend. 
Normally recover, you have to spend all remaining energy and you recover that many shields. This allows you to be a little bit more tactical in how you play that. You've got two of those. Gunnery team, engineering team, and sensor team. I think we've seen these all before. Yeah, well, this is nothing new. Uh, single turbo laser, that's nothing new. The ion cannon battery is new. Um, and that is an attack with an attack value of four. And that uh, allows us to uh, spend two energy to attack from this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, the defender suffers one critical damage and then an ion token, and then cancel all. So it's like a normal ion cannon, except this time it also gives them a critical damage. And it comes with four of those. Wow. Um, quad laser cannons, We've, that's nothing new. Tabana gas, engine booster, and, um, backup shield generator, comms booster, those aren't new. Okay, the titles are new here. The, we have the Assailer. Uh, when defending, if a target section has reinforced token, you may change a uh, eyeball to a, an evade result. This is only useful at turn uh, at distance three because you don't get any defense dice. If you do a reinforce, then if they're attacking the next section, you already get one evade, so you can effectively block two hits uh, if they're attacking you at range three. But this is like you have to know that they're attacking a specific section, so that's uh, that's rough. I don't know if I would use this one. Instigator. If you perform a recover action, you may recover one additional shield. That's nice. And impetuous. After you perform an attack that destroys an enemy ship, you may acquire a target lock. So, a little more offensive, a little more defensive, and uh, a little more energy manipulation there. So, very cool stuff. That is all of our upgrade cards. And that is, that is the uh, Raider class Corvette or otherwise known as the Imperial Raider. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing about this. This comes with the uh, campaign structure for the Will of the Empire campaign. And uh, this is basically a five-mission campaign where depending on how, you know, you do a first mission and a second mission, if you lose or if you win, different things can happen. I, I don't really play campaigns. I usually just do straight-up, you know, battles. But it's cool if anybody wants to actually try a campaign in X-Wing where one loss might affect a future game. Uh, and there's a whole mission booklet for this uh, that kind of, in the vein of Imperial Assault, kind of gives you uh, different mission objectives and how, how to play out each mission. And then here is the rule book for the Raider. And it's going to give you a reminder for a lot of huge ship rules, which I'm going to be honest with you, I have to brush up on. I have not played Epic in a long time, and it's been pretty much dead ever since this came out. So, uh, well, look at that. Look at the Raider firing arcs. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, so um, it's been kind of dead. And so now that we actually have uh, you know, Epic ships for both sides, it's going to be really nice to do some combat of uh, Raider versus CR-90. So thanks for watching, and I hope you liked the unboxing. And if you liked it, comment, subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you later. Yeah.